Hey everybody, what's up? This is Kirsten here. Thank you so much for joining me on this brand new episode of the Balanced Wives podcast. Today we're talking about fat loss and I'm going to give you nine fat loss reminders that you have to keep in mind if you have that goal. Now, before we get there, I want to make sure that you know that before you start your fat loss phase, you have to be in a really healthy place and you have to have a relatively high metabolic rate, fast metabolism, and strong body, you hopefully have done some resistance training because when you do that and then you do fat loss after that, you are going to get the results that you wanted to. You're going to look cleaner, you're going to look fitter, you're gonna have that nice sculpted body versus if you are already eating very little, your metabolism is low, you're barely doing any strength training, and then you start cutting from there, you're not going to get the result that you wanted. You may get a little bit smaller, maybe if even that happens, but the shape of your body is not going to change. So this is why I start most of my clients out with what I call the build up phase, because most of them come to me actually by eating less than what they need. Let's say that their actual needs are around 2000 calories and they are they're eating around 1700, then they are not in an optimal place yet. So what we do is that we gradually increase the calories, get them to a healthy place that does not have to mean weight gain always. And we uh, strength train, make sure that the body is strong. We have the muscle and then we do the fat loss, which then will reveal that muscle. So yes, it is a process. It does not happen in, in a week. <laughs> it, um, sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes, um, you know, it depends on how deep deficit there has been. If there's a person who's been in a deep deficit for six months, then the buildup phase is going to be a little bit strong, uh, longer. If there's a person who's been in a deficit for just a couple months, then the buildup phase is going to go a little bit faster right? and we can go into fat low act loss quicker. It really depends on a person. But what I see is that most people need that period of building up their strength, building up their metabolic rate before they can do fat loss. And in my world, honestly, fat loss is something that you sort of have to earn. And I don't talk about earning food the way I maybe thought, you know, in the past, and I was like, I got to do this workout and I got to go running so that I can eat this and that. Um, I know a lot of people still think that way. And I hope that we can get rid of this mindset because it's not helpful. You don't earn your food, but you sort of have to earn your fat loss because you have to be in a healthy place for it. You cannot cut if you're already eating very low. If your met metabolism is not in an optimal place, then you're not going to get the results. And how do you know that that could be you? Well, if you've been trying for a long time, if you have been doing this diet and next diet or just kept yourself in a low calorie state, even if that low calorie is like 1700, but nothing is happening for you, then it means that your metabolism is probably not in a healthy place and you really really need that build up period first. And if you don't know, if you are eating enough, if you are eating at least at maintenance where you can start doing the cut from, go ahead and grab my lean ladies guide. You will have super simple and very good calculation there, how you can figure out if you are in a place for a cut or you still have to do some work before you earn the right to do the cut. So make sure to grab my Lean Ladies Calorie Protein and Workout Guide and do the calculations there to understand if you are in a healthy place to even do a fat loss. All right, but now um, let's say that this is your goal. What are the nine things that you should know about fat loss? And the first one is that you don't have to put any label on your diet, okay? You don't have to call yourself a keto person or a vegan or a paleo or do one of those MLM systems that uh, promised you great results overnight. You don't have to do any of that stuff to be successful at fat loss. And I encourage you to not do any of this stuff because it's almost like we're putting ourselves into a box when we identify with this one way of eating. We identify with being keto now, right? Let's use that as an example. And then we think that, okay, I cannot have a carbohydrates. Uh, this is how I lose fat. You know, everybody says carbs are bad. I'm never supposed to have any blood sugar spike. You guys, this is just BS. This is not right. And I've seen so many things happen to women when they are uh, doing keto, especially for a long period of time. Hair loss, fatigue, tired, workouts are not the same. 
you are not able to build muscle when you are eating very low carbohydrates. You actually do need carbs for energy and for muscle building. You do need protein, yes, but you also need carbohydrates. So I see a lot of people who are just not getting results and they still think that they should just keto harder then. No, you don't have to keto harder. You just have to change your approach. Or if you decide that you're going to be vegan now because you decided that this is the healthiest thing to do, I don't agree with that either because I think you're missing out on a lot of things if you are not getting the right nutrients. So it is important that you understand what macronutrients you need and also what micronutrients you need in order to lose fat in a healthy way. And I often say that, yes, I am a macro coach, but I really care about your micronutrients too. That's why you're never going to probably never going to see me eating like fat-free mozzarella and weird stuff like that. <laughs> I just don't do it. And you would rather see me talk about beef liver, why we have to eat that, why we should take uh, our adrenal cocktails, why the minerals in the body are important. So these things matter. And these are on a micronutrient level, which you often miss out on if you do some of the really extreme diets, right? Not to mention the macronutrients that you may miss out on if you do, for example, keto or any other uh, diet that has you cut out one macro almost completely. Or like I personally did back in the day, way, way, way back in the day, like low fat, everything, no fat, everything you're missing out on fat. So it is important that your, your balance is good and that you don't put any super restrictive labels on your diet because then you're just putting yourself into a box and you feel like you can't get out of this box because then you almost like a broke a rule and this is not right. I just want you to know that you don't have to identify with any of this stuff. You don't have to put a label on it to be successful with your diet. And I recommend that everybody tracks their macros at least for a little while to understand what a normal healthy balance looks like and use that as a foundation for their fat loss. So my first point was that uh, you don't have to put a label on your diet if you have a fat loss goal. All right, my second point today is that you do need a calorie deficit in order to lose body fat. Sometimes people say that, no, nah, calories don't matter. It's just that, are your hormones healthy? But to me, I don't quite understand how that would work because where does the excess energy go then? Let's say that you are eating way more than what your body needs. The energy is just not going to disappear, right? It is going to be stored in your body. So yes, you do need calorie deficit if you have a fat loss goal. But now the third reminder is that but you need to have a high metabolism first. So this is what I sort of mentioned earlier too. You sort of have to earn the right to go into calorie deficit. You have to earn the right to do fat loss phase. So if your body is not in an optimal place, your metabolism is not healthy, then now is not the time to do the fat loss phase, right? You have to build your body back up again using the same tools that I just mentioned earlier building up your strength. There are really a couple of things that help you to speed up your metabolism. They are strength training and they are eating more. So you have to go through this. It doesn't matter how uncomfortable it is. If you have a fat loss goal, but you're not ready, you can't go into a deeper calorie deficit. If you're already eating 1700 and your maintenance is 2000, then, um, and then you haven't gotten results, right? You're eating that 1700 and it's been like three years already and you're not getting results then something's wrong. And you probably have to increase your calories because your metabolism has become slow. So this is the third point. Yes, um, even, if you, even though you do need calorie deficit, you have to have a healthy metabolism first and you may have to build it up at first. All right, the fourth reminder about fat loss is that your fat loss phase is supposed to be only two to three months long. That's about eight to 12 weeks long. And then we have to take a break, right? And this is what most people don't do. And this is why they fail. This is why their fat loss fails. They stop getting results, even though they may have gotten results at first. So two to three months is really the maximum amount of time. It really depends on a person. If I have them do it for two months or three months, um, it really depends on their health and how they're feeling, how they're doing and all that. But a fat loss should not be something that you do six months or a year or four years. <laughs> this is just not sustainable and you're not going to be healthy in this process. That's why you're feeling like crap. If you've been doing that fat loss or trying so hard, it's already like second year, you're trying this and nothing's happening. You're not getting better. You're actually getting worse. You maybe even start gaining weight, then you're not in the right place. So fat loss phase should be only two to three months long. Fat loss reminder number five, you need diet breaks. And this is what happens after that two to three month long fat loss phase. You need a diet break. And this is again something that so many people do not do. What is a diet break? 
Diet break is a period of time, usually one to three weeks, where you are eating higher calories after your fat loss phase. Let's say that your fat loss calories were something around 1,700 and your maintenance is 2,100. Then for one to three weeks, you should be eating at your maintenance or at least close to your maintenance. And please don't freak out. It's not going to be like, oh my God, in this next two, three weeks, I'm going to gain a bunch of weight. All my hard work goes to, you know, down the toilet because I, I'm going to gain everything back. No, it's not going to be like this at all if you do it in a smart way, if you are strategic about it. But you do need a diet break so that you don't screw up your metabolism, so that you keep your thyroid healthy, because uh, your hormones are downregulating every time you are in a calorie deficit. So we need that break. And that break, that one to three week break is kind of like, ah. Oh, for your metabolism, like, oh, okay, cool. We can take a little breather, we can recover, we can upregulate the metabolism and we can be healthy. So this is absolutely necessary so that you don't slow down your body, so that you don't mess with your thyroid, so that you stay healthy. Fat loss remind, reminder number six, and this is really important, um, it is that you may be losing inches, but your weight may not be going down immediately. And this is normal. If you notice that, okay, my weight is about the same, but my uh, waist measurement, let's say my belly button or two inches above, two inches below, they are going down. Your weight is the same. You are winning. You're winning big time because you know why? Because you are maintaining your muscle and you are losing body fat. So if your um, measurements are going down, especially around the belly area, and your weight stays the same, that means that you're losing fat and you're maintaining muscle. Now, of course, if you have a lot of weight to lose, you are overweight, you need to get rid of some of the body weight, then over time, your weight will start going down too. But if it doesn't happen immediately, but you do notice that your inches are coming down or centimeters are down, down, this is a big win and you should celebrate that. You should be freaking happy that you're not starting to lose muscle immediately. This also probably means that your strength training is on point and you're, that you are getting enough protein. So celebrate that, be happy about it. And I just want, I would just want to say it one more time and maybe just go back and listen to it again. If you don't start losing body weight immediately, but your measurements are going down, you are on the right track. Just keep going. All right, the next fat loss reminder is that even if your goal is fat loss, your workout should look like training, building muscle. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Your, the goal of your workout should still be building muscle. Okay, so why is that? It is because we don't want to lose muscle mass. Like we're already talked, muscle is what gives you the shape that you want. It also has so many health benefits, you know, improved uh, blood sugar regulation, just the strength. I mean, there's, there's so many, you know, uh, so many positive sides to having enough muscle mass. By the way, Dr. Gabriel Lyon talks about it so much. Go look her up. It's amazing, like her research and everything she does. I'm talking about muscle, why this is really, a really, really important thing. Uh, so even if your goal is to, fat, to lose body fat, you have to train with the intention of building muscle. Even if you are in a calorie deficit and may not be putting on muscle, your intention should still be that right i'm going to the gym i'm not going to do an hour of cardio on the treadmill i'm actually going to do maybe like 45 to an hour uh, 45 minutes to an hour of weightlifting because i want to maintain that muscle mass this is important so again even if your goal is fat loss your training should look like you are trying to build muscle always fat loss reminder number eight after a fat loss phase which you remember was two to three months you need to do a rever reverse diet what is that reverse diet? Reverse diet, you probably know, is a gradual increase of calories up to your maintenance level again. And this is what, again, so many people don't do. And that's why they spend years in fat loss phase or in a calorie deficit, wondering why they hit the plateau and why they feel like crap all the time. So let me tell you how this should be working. So let's say that your calorie deficit is around 1700 calories and your maintenance is 2100. By the way, your maintenance, like I said, you can calculate that in my Lean Ladies Calorie Protein and Workout Guide. Go ahead and get that and see if you are at your maintenance yet. If you're not there, are you maybe in a deficit and have you been in a deficit for four years? Because this is this is a problem. Okay, so let's say that you had a calorie deficit that was 1,700 calories and your maintenance is 2,100. Now, what are we going to do after 
fat loss phase is over is that we're going to increase the calories and increase them until we get to the place of our maintenance. Now, of course, many people are thinking, oh my God, but what was the point of losing everything? Because now I'm going to gain everything back. And it doesn't happen like that. This is the point. You are learning how to eat more over time without losing the gains, right? Without putting on all the body fat again. You're actually going to maintain the results that you got in a deficit. But because if you increase your calories gradually, you continue strength training, you continue walking a lot, then you will maintain your results, look still the same, pretty much the same while now eating higher calories. And why is it important to eat higher calories? Because you know that being a calorie deficit is stress in the body and we have to get out of that stress. We cannot stay there forever. Right? We've talked about it so much. Sometimes I feel like I repeat myself all the time, but based on the questions that I get, I still I still keep talking about it. Now, of course, it may be that you're going to gain a couple of pounds, but this is not a big deal, you guys. This is really not a big deal because if you look pretty much the same, who cares what the scale says? Let's say, say that you got your weight down to 150 pounds. I'm just using a random number here. Uh, maybe you started 170, uh, now you're 150, and you're going to think, okay, with the reverse side, I'm going to go back up to 170. Probably not. So you're probably not going to stay at 150 either. You're going to be like 152, maybe something like that, a couple pounds here or there, but you're going to look pretty much the same that you did, your lowest calorie point, but now you're eating more food. And this is so wonderful, and this is so awesome. A lot of people don't know about this and are absolutely terrified because nobody ever talks about this. They're like, this is just a bunch of BS. How is it possible that I'm eating more, I'm not gaining, but if you do it right, it absolutely is possible. All right, and then my ninth uh, point, ninth fat loss reminder is that most of your life should be spent at maintenance and not in a fat loss phase, not in a calorie deficit. Again, another thing that's really difficult to wrap our heads around because um, because we've been constantly told that we always have to be eating less. You want to lose weight, lose, uh, eat less and less and less, and who cares, you know, um, what your health is like or whatever, just as long as you can lose weight. And this is a really very, very unhealthy approach. And I don't want you to do that. So if you have a fat loss goal, go through that uh, two to three month of calorie deficit, your calorie, uh, then do a diet break. Then you can do another two, three months of calorie deficit. And then there needs to be a reverse diet that I already told you about. And then you are now at your maintenance. And this is what you want to do most of the time. You don't want to be dieting a million times a year. You don't want to be dieting even every year. You just uh, want to eat at maintenance as much as possible because this is also the healthiest thing to do. And if you want to do the fat loss, fat loss phase, that's great. You got to the body composition that you now like better. You did a normal, healthy, uh, very strategic uh, um, uh, uh, reverse diet afterwards and now you're just enjoying life and this is where you're staying at for a little while for I mean I would like you to stay there forever because this is feels this is what feels good and uh, this is what your body likes better way better than being in a calorie deficit all the time okay I hope that you found this episode helpful nine fat loss reminders. Again, I talked about my free resource a couple of times uh, in today's podcast. So this free resource is called Lean Ladies Calorie Protein and Workout Guide. And what it gives you is that it gives you calculations. You can figure out if you are eating at your maintenance already, how much you should be eating if you have a fat loss goal, how much you should be eating even if you have a maintenance, uh, sorry, um, surplus goal, which many people don't have, but some do. And then also you will get in the same a blueprint. Also, how to get started with proper strength training, because a lot of people don't know. They just do random stuff of YouTube or you know Instagram influencers, whatever the thing is. This uh, guide will show you how to get started. And when you do that, let's say good solid two, three months, you are doing so freaking well. I can promise that to you. Just follow the guide, do the workouts, um, the follow the blueprints there, and you're going to get great results. You just need to have patience for it. So this guide literally has so much free information in it. It's super valuable. I really hope that you grab it, that you do the calculations to figure out what you need for your body, get started with workouts, and you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish. So thank you so much for being here today. If you have any thoughts you want me to talk about in the next episode, I'm all ears, so let me know and have a great week.